small school of young fish were swimming down a river when a larger fish happened by, going the other direction. The larger fish turned to the small fish and smiled, if fish can smile, and said, How's the water, boys? The smaller fish all smiled and nodded and swam on. And after a moment, one of the smaller fish said, What's water? <laughs> Not my story. It's been around for quite a while. But that story illustrates our fundamental difficulty in seeing the obvious, especially when it's just all around us. It's not impossible to see the water, it's just difficult. And once we see that water all around us, then it's really challenging to know how to change the water if a change is even called for. An old Chinese general once said that it's impossible to solve a problem unless we can understand the age in which that problem lives. Another translation of that was unless we can understand the sea in which that problem swims. So, fellow swimmers, <laughs> the sea in which we swim has changed. But most of us, like the little fish, don't even know we're in a sea at all. So I want to invite you in this video to take a moment with me and jump out of the water just far enough to get a better view. Since the worldwide COVID pandemic, and more precisely, since our reaction to the pandemic, and since governmental reactions to the pandemic occurred, a lot has changed. When asked recently, three out of four Americans in that poll said that their lives are even now not back to pre-COVID normality or whatever that means. Half of those surveys said that they didn't expect that their lives would ever be the same. And less than one in 10 of those people said that their lives are in any way better now now that the pandemic is behind them. So what's changed? So you're a leader, you're a manager, you're a supervisor, you're an influencer. That's probably why you come and watch these videos where we share stuff with you from the Hilt Academy. As you know, Hilt Academy is all about high impact leadership training. And what we try to do is to provide simple leveraged concepts that will help you be more effective because leadership is hard but we don't wanna make it harder than it needs to be. So you know as a leader or a manager or a supervisor, someone who, whether you have that title or not, is about influencing other people, that something is different. There has been a sea change. We've observed at least 15 changes in assumptions at work and about work. They're very quick, stay with me, stick with me, see which ones of these that you see and which ones may apply to your work. Here's the first significant change. Most of your customers you used to think, or those you serve, valued human contact. But now, most of them don't value it from their organizations or from their companies or from their enterprises or even from folks who are providing services for them like they used to. The value of the human touch in an enterprise or a capital setting or a governmental setting is significantly lower than it used to be. The second challenge, the second thing we need to pay attention to, we used to think that in person was always better than digital. But now, and I'm not saying this is good or bad, it just is. Now, for many things, not all things, but many things, digital is actually better. Here's the third thing we wanna pay attention to. We used to think that digital interaction and digital delivery of anything was second class. That it was somehow worth less, therefore, than actual physical, touchable, delivery or, or, or interaction. And, and now we know that digital delivery of things, if it's faster, if it's on demand, or both, is much more valuable than a person doing that delivery. The fourth idea, we used to think that before COVID, restrictions in service delivery that were even put in place as COVID began to ramp up and our response to that, that restrictions in service delivery put in place during that time were temporary. 
In fact, even before COVID, if there was some sort of interruption in how we got what we needed in our society, we thought, well, that's temporary because service gets better and better and better. Now, however, service levels everywhere we go are significantly lower in nearly every sector of our society and of our economy and of our interactions. However, expectations are much, much higher. And it's not going to be long before that new lower level of service that's being provided that everyone just now experiences everywhere that no one wants is going to give rise to fierce, fierce competition for what you and your enterprise provide. Whether it's public or private, if somebody can do what you do, but with better service, they will win in every environment. Here's the fifth idea, that the old way was the right way. And when we went through the COVID experience that we all went through, came up with different ways of doing scheduling and staffing and working in spaces that, that we just did that for a brief period of time and that it was a little storm we went through or a big storm we went through with regard to those three things, schedule, staffing, and space. And then after the, the pandemic and the reaction to the pandemic, which by the way were two things, after that happened, we'd all go back to the way we were. That's not the way it is. Now, most of our approaches to how we schedule ourselves, how we staff, what our space looks like, most of those approaches that were pre-COVID just don't work. Here's the sixth idea. If somebody is not at work physically, they're just not as productive. But now we know that they are more productive when they are not commuting to a workplace and then commuting home. They, they are more productive in, in measurable ways, but we also know that they are less creative and less innovative. So if you want to just measure inputs and outputs, people work in virtual environments are significantly more productive to the tune of about 40%, but they will only do what they've always been doing. If you want true creativity and innovation, you still have to be together face to face, literally face to face. Here's the seventh idea. Organizations and companies need to locate wherever the talent is. That's what, how people approached it pre COVID. The corollary to that is that the talent has to move to where the organizations are and the talent has to somehow change to fit the structure of the company. After COVID, the company has to change to fit the talent and still be able to accomplish its mission. That's a massive shift, a shift that no one saw coming. And it may have begun just before COVID, but it was accelerated all the way through. Just look at how you do your work. If you want to have really good talent, you have to change the company, the organization, the enterprise in order to fit that good talent. Eighth idea, people only have one job. They just work for you, right? That was a long standing way of thinking. That's not the way it works now. They don't work the, for you. <laughs> it's not even the way they think about it. In fact, most folks work, air quotes, more than one job. It's all over the map, depending upon what season it is that they are in, but most people out there participate in the gig economy. A large percentage of them are doing so in what, you ready for a new term, ready for this? They're doing so in what is coming to be called the gray market. Think about this. You've heard of the black market before, which is illicit and illegal and escaping any kind of measurement and it usually runs on cash or it runs on tender that is in some way untraceable. The gray market is a market that's not out in the open and it's kind of in the shadows. That's somebody who does uh, something as a gig, but they only get paid cash for it and they never have to report it and they don't have to follow any rules or regulations. This gray market is notoriously difficult to measure and it appears to be growing dramatically. And about, uh, it looks like about one in three people are involved anytime in the year in the gray market, either as somebody participating, providing something in a gray market or somebody who is buying something in the gray market, but it's very hard to track it. And they do that for a whole bunch of reasons. 
Most of those reasons are that they just enjoy that kind of work and they don't want to go through the hassle of trying to go through an organization or a company or set up a business. They just like the work. Or they're, maybe they're saving money for something or they're gaining experience for a next level in their job that they can't get in the job that they're in right now. Or they're building their own business and they got to start somewhere. Or they can't make ends meet in their current job and they need an extra infusion of cash. Or they're bored. <laughs> but that gray market is really, really big. And I'll bet if you get people to be honest with you that, that many people around you are involved in the gray market. So here's the ninth idea. Employees will work the way they're told to work. <laughs> I don't need to talk much about that except to say, nope, not anymore. And here's the tenth idea. Success is achieved today the same way that it was a dozen years ago. But that's not true. Now, post-COVID, success means a full life at and outside of work. It's not work-life balance. It's a full life at and outside of work. It's not, it's not just looking around at, at people and saying, hey, kids nowadays, those kids, they don't know how to work. Well, they know how to work a lot. They just don't work the way you think they work and they work outside of work at other things as well as at work because they want a different kind of life. This, we're not going back. This is the way it is now. The 11th idea, we're coming to the end here. Hang in, okay? Digital technology is just a tool. Before COVID, maybe just a couple of years before COVID, that's how most people thought. But now, post COVID, digital technology changes everything. Digital technology is connected. Those connections are called networks and the most powerful force in our economy right now are networks. If you control the network or influence the network, it changes everything. You change everything. And you and I pick the kind of life we're going to be leading based upon the networks that we are a part of. Here's the 12th idea. Tech technology makes things faster. That is the old way of thinking. Digital natives by default uh, often think that high-tech solutions are applied to, uh, uh, to all problems. That's a digital native. High-tech solutions are applied everywhere. But people who are not digital natives tend to think that low-tech solutions should be applied to low-tech problems and high-tech solutions only to high-tech problems and that digital solutions do not always make things faster. So we are in a really fascinating time where the, a larger and larger percentage of our workforce are now digital natives. That is people who grew up with connected digital technology. So here's the 13th idea. The, it, it used to be before COVID, it used to be that if my, for example, my accountant or my attorney or the regulators with a capital R said no, well, the answer was no. Now fast forward on the other side of COVID, if, if there's any sort of uh, a response that we gain from how, from interacting with federal responses or state or local or hyperlocal responses or people who were experts and people who were in the know, we interacted with them and then we realize, wait, 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 they don't know everything. Maybe we're gonna have to resist that. And so a large swaths of people found out that they could say no with little or no negative consequence. And now in your workplace, you're experiencing that every freaking time you turn around. Maybe it's good, maybe it's not, we don't know yet, but people do not just nod and salute smartly and turn on their heel and go do whatever they're told to do anymore. Because we discovered that that is not the way it works. Here's the 14th idea. We can plan for the future in traditional ways. And that's not the way it works now. now. Rather than traditional strategic planning, we now need to learn how to do what's called scenario-based planning. We call that strategic positioning. We have other videos here about how to do that. But the idea is that you plan for a bunch of different kinds of futures and give your best effort to those that have the highest likelihood of occurrence and would have the greatest impact if they occur. Here's our last one. We live and work in a capitalistic economy and society. We live and work in a free market. That's what people thought before COVID. After COVID, not just because of COVID, but this is kind of a dateline mark for us. Now, we've come to understand that we live in what is called a surveillance capitalist economy and society. It doesn't mean Big Brother is watching everything we do. That's not what it means but it means that through our digital connectivity, it's possible for folks to not just market to us, but uh, to, uh, to use surveillance marketing. 
watching every decision we make online, very easy for them to do because we give them permission to do it when we, whenever we say yes to something. And then to curate what is sent our way hundreds of th and thousands of times in a year because they have been able to watch what we want and what we spend our time on. We do not live in a free market. We live in a, a surveillance market or a capitalistic economy that is based upon surveillance. Sounds dark and dismal, doesn't have to be, but keep your eyes open because it changes how we interact. There's a lot more that we can be said that can be said about this. So much has changed. The sea in which we swim has changed. But I wonder if some of us are floating around like nothing has changed at all, singing Dory's song in, in Finding Nemo. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming. <laughs> so here's my challenge to you. Whether you agree with this, the 15 points that I made above or not, let me challenge you to become a keen observer of the changes around you. The ones that have been going on slowly are probably stronger changes than the ones that just happened quickly. Be a keen observer of those. You'll be better for it and you'll be a better leader for it. So, how's the water? <laughs> Thanks for spending time. Take care.